in Germany in the 1930s, it was impossible to escape the face of the Führer. It was part of everyday life. Hitler's image was present in almost all public buildings. So if you went to an office, to your town hall, local council, in most school classrooms as well, Hitler's image is present in all print media. It's depicted in most newspapers, and newspapers at this time are routinely featuring illustrations. That might be Hitler at public events, but it might also be these sort of features about you know, getting to know the Führer as a, as a real man, your good, relatable German. Thanks to the 1936 Berlin Olympics, Hitler's face became known around the world. Nazi propaganda depicted him as a benign ruler of a revitalized nation. People came back from Berlin and said that Germany was a great place. That was Hitler's biggest victory. Almost all of the photographs of Hitler at the games were taken by his friend and court photographer, Heinrich Hoffmann. One of his most famous pictures of the 1930s was one of the smallest, and it made Hitler very wealthy. When Hitler becomes head of state, you know, like a lot of heads of state, he, he appears on the definitive postage stamp. In some ways, that's not that strange. But what's interesting about the fact is that Hitler actually makes a vast amount of money by his likeness being on postage stamps. The portrait is, is taken by Hoffman, and it's licensed to the post office and there is a royalty collected by Hitler on every stamp that was produced. So this stamp actually makes Hitler a very wealthy man. Hoffmann claimed he saw the German postmaster general hand Hitler a 50 million mark check, money made from the proceeds of the stamps. I think it tells you quite a lot about the kind of hucksterish, gangster-like nature of the regime that, that, that Hitler like a classic tin pot dictator is trying to cream as much cash, you know, out of his own people as quickly as he can. It's the kind of quick buck morality of a gangster. <laughs> 